everybody, it's Amber and I'm back with another video to share in my Rediscover Your Stash series. So in today's video, I'm going to be making an album that is perfect for beginner crafters who want to learn how to make mini albums or for the seasoned crafter who just wants to make some different varieties of albums. So I've done tons of different ones on my channel and today I've been really, really, really waiting to do this one and so excited to do this one because I absolutely love the paper collection that we're going to be using today. So yes, I did take it out of my hoard vault. It's the Carousel Collection by Maggie Holmes. I'm trying to get through these collections so I can justify maybe getting her new one <laughs> that is out now. Um, so anyways, this Carousel Collection is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Circus, like vintage circus and carnival theme is my favorite theme ever. I have used a little bit of this um, to make some kits and I already sent those and mailed those out but I do have a lot of paper left and I want to show you the simplest easiest way that you can make a mini album with single sided 12 by 12 paper. I am working with this type of album base. You do not have to get this. I don't even know if it's still available. These are the Tim Holtz grunge board albums. Now grunge board is just like a it's like chipboard but it's a little more flexible and soft. You can totally use chipboard for this. These are just six by six pieces for the album base. So for this you're just going to need six to eight pieces of six by six chipboard. But because I had this in my stash I really want to use it up. It came with 12 and I have six left here which is perfect. And don't worry about the holes. We're going to punch our own holes. So all you need like I mentioned are six six by six pieces of chipboard and then of course you're going to need something to punch holes if you have a hole punch or a crop a dial any of that will work and then of course two rings so I got these with the set here but you can buy rings like this at the Dollar Tree, Staples, Walmart, anywhere where they sell office supplies order them online if you're not going to stores right now which I know a lot of us aren't doing um, you can totally order some online and I'll link some below that are really um, decent priced and so that way you can make these. I'll also link where I buy my chipboard below but like I said I had this in my stash so I'm going to go ahead and use it. All it is is pre-cut album base. So let me show you what you're going to need for the paper. Okay so what you're going to need for a six page album are six pieces that measure eight by eight so that's the size and then six pieces that measure five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So as you can see here, I've already cut these down. I've got five of each. So we're gonna cut um, one of each here on camera. So first we'll do the eight by eight piece. And you do have to have two separate pieces because you can't get both of these cuts out of one 12 by 12. So it does generate some scraps, but the good thing about that is that you can make another project with all your scraps. Okay, so this one's gonna measure eight by eight and it doesn't matter which way you put your paper in since it's going to be a perfect square so if you hear that background noise my air conditioning is um, kicking on it's a little bit hot here so we went ahead and turned our AC on today but it's super chilly in my craft room so I might go and turn that down in a minute but this is going to be an eight by eight square piece so like I said, you do get some scraps, but, but we're going to use some of these in the project. So hold on to them. So there's our sixth 8x8 eight eight piece, and now we need to cut a 5 and 3 quarter by 5 and 3 quarter piece. And this is a great project to use your single-sided paper with because you're going to be gluing it down, and so the non-designed side will be glued down. So five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Again, really good scraps left, so hang on to them. Okay, so now we've got all the pieces we need, and this album could not be easier. Let's get started. So we're first going to work with our eight by eight pieces and our album base. So take one of your pieces of chipboard that measures six by six, and then in no particular order, you don't have to worry about the order right now, we're just going to get these covered. So you're just going to turn your eight by eight piece over, 
and add some ATG to the back of your chipboard. This doesn't have to be like perfect or straight, just add enough to where it sticks to the paper. And you are going to be lucky if you're using chipboard because grunge board is kind of hard to glue down. So I hope that you are using chipboard. So just lay that on there and try to ignore that mine already has holes here because yours won't. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of burnish that down a little bit and I try to center it as best I could in the middle of my scrapbook paper. So this is kind of what the front is going to look like, like this. That's why I made sure my holes were over here, but again, you don't have to worry about that. So the next thing I want to do is angle these corners. So we're going to do a cut at an angle and you want to leave a little tiny gap, like a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch from the cut to the edge of your paper. See how I left just a little space there? So go ahead and do that for every single corner. So now we have something that looks like this. So the next thing that I like to do is just take your bone folder and kind of crease where you're going to be folding the paper just to get it a little bit prepped. And then gently just kind of bend the paper. You don't want this paper to crack, so we're not doing this super tight. So the next thing you're going to be doing is folding each of these edges and gluing them down just like that. So you want to add your glue or your adhesive of choice right here. I recommend using score tape for this um, or your ATG gun like I am so that we can get all the way up to that edge. So then I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to gently, not too tight though, kind of fold that over and use my bone folder to burnish it. Okay, so then you're going to do this for every side. Again, do it gently because you don't want to push down here and cause these two sides to rip. So I'm just going to add my ATG again to this all the way to the edge and glue all the rest of these sides down. we have our last one glued down you can see how this is coming together it has a nice finished edge here and it's almost got like a puffy quality to it because we wrapped this around chipboard so um, as soon as you do that if you have anything if you have any excess paper sticking out just take your bone folder and kind of fold it over like this I don't have much excess on mine, but you can just take your bone folder and just fold it over just like that. So now we have our first page done and I can feel my holes are over here because that's where I'm going to punch them, but you don't have to worry about that. So now we need to take care of this bare side and that's where these pages come in here. The five and three quarters by five and three quarter pieces. You're simply going to center it on the back of this page and glue it down. Super easy. So make sure when you do your adhesive, you're getting it almost to that edge. Don't go over the edge because you don't want the adhesive to seep out and stick to the next page. So make sure you're gluing almost over to the edge. So it's nice because once you center this, there's going to be a border all the way around it of that other paper behind it. So. It looks really nice and finished and it wasn't hard to do at all. This is a perfect project for single sided paper. Okay, so now we have our first one done. See how pretty? It has a folded edge there. The back is super cute. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to finish all the other ones. I've got five more to do just like this and then I'll be back to show you the next step.
Okay, so I've finished covering all of my pages. I've got six of them here. So here they are. I love the way they feel. They kind of feel a little bit puffy, like I said. But here they are. I've got them all covered. I love this one. It's so cute. The carousel. And then there's this one. I got the holes punched in this one so I can use it as a template for the rest of them. Did I show you the back of these? And then this one. So I'm still trying to decide which one I want to use for the cover. I'm thinking this one, and I know that might sound weird, but I'm thinking this one because I want to decorate it with all my die cuts and stuff. So the next thing to do is to punch the holes because you're going to you're going to bind this with rings. So as you know, I already had the holes punched in my album base, so I went ahead and punched one through so I could use it as a template. And all you need to do is just line this up with the rest of your pages and simply punch where the holes are. It's so easy, and you can use your crop a dial. You can use whatever you have. If I line this up right with the hole here, and then punch it through, and it's perfect. There it is. So I'm going to do this with the rest of my pages and get all the holes punched and I'll be right back. So I've got all the holes punched. My album is looking super cute and it's so easy. Um, but I'm going to take out my stash and see what I have in there. I know that I want to use some of these. These are cute little popcorn boxes and I got them at Marshall's like a long time ago. And I thought of this collection when I saw them. So I want to use one of these to kind of just put in the album as one of the flip pages. Okay, so I punched some holes in there and I'll see how it works. Um, just to add a little bit of extra interest to the album. So before I get out the rest of my carousel stash, I want to take some scraps and make some pockets. So this is how we're going to do it. It's really, really easy to make pockets. I'm going to do it on three of my pages. So I need three scraps here. So all you need are three pieces that measure six by three. And so you want it to be three up and down. So with this one, it's oriented up and down like this. So you're going to put the top of the paper to the right in your cutter and cut this down to three inches. So then you want to turn it this way and cut it down to six inches. So you're going to need three pieces just like this. So here's the three pieces I just cut to make pockets. So the next thing I like to do is cut a little notch out of my pocket. You've seen me do this a million times. I'm using a one and a half inch circle punch to do this. You can use any circle punch you have. I'm just going to stack all three of them together and just eyeball the center. Go about halfway down, a little less than halfway down your circle punch and just punch out a little notch for your pockets. I think that would look adorable on the front cover. So then all you do is take any wet glue that you have and I'm going to be using the Tombow Mono multi-liquid glue. I'm just going to bring this mat in here so I don't get glue everywhere. And I'm going to take the piece that I'm working with and just glue it on the three sides. Not the top, but the two sides and the bottom. So you just want to do like a thin bead of glue. Take your page and center it. This is already six inches, although it's a little bit over six inches, the um, actual chipboard. So just kind of center it on there and press it down and let that glue dry. And you've got yourself a really cute little pocket. So of course we're going to have to punch, repunch the hole, but since it's already punched on the other side, we can use that as a guide. So I'm just going to let the glue dry. Maybe take my bone folder and just press it a little bit so it's nice and secure. Okay. So now I'm going to do this for two other pages.
so I've got all the pockets in here that I want. There's one there, one here, and one there. So now I just need to repunch the hole on that bottom. up and then I'm going to put my rings on now. So I've got my rings on and my album is coming together so nicely. So let me show you something that I did at the end and then we're going to decorate it. So here's our album. It's really, really cute and it's come together so nice. There's a pocket. The pages are nice and sturdy to put pictures and add memories to. And then here's our little insert. And then what I did for this one, instead of having the solid covered page with a nice edge um, up, I flipped it around so that way it's on the back. So the back cover has the nice um, covered page and then this has like the framed page. So there we go, that's our album and this is so easy. So let me get out my carousel stash and see what I have to decorate.
Okay, so I'm done decorating my album, but the last thing I want to do is add some really cute ribbon to the rings. So I grabbed two kinds of ribbon, and I'll show you what they look like. So here they are. And I got this one here at Michael's. It's really pretty. It has like mint green and then like darker green stars. And I got this one at Dollar Tree. Um, so I think they I think they match really well and I'm just going to simply put these on the rings. So I want to make sure that I'm tying them to an area that's not like the opening part. so cute and it's just kind of fun so let's do a flip through of this entire album I'm so excited it was super easy so here's my cover I just layered a bunch of the elements and these stars and buttons even came with the ephemera pack so there's that and I layered it and then this is a chipboard piece so then here's the first page I have a pocket here with a bunch of journaling cards and ephemera in there and some ticket stubs. And then I just layered a bunch of the labels down here. It says celebrate walking on air. And then over here I put some foam tape behind this frame and a picture can be slipped in there but I just put this little um, Polaroid die cut in there for now. I layered a bunch of stuff down here, some washi tape, a label, and then a sticker. And I always reinforce the sticker with some ATG behind it. I love this spread here because this is like an acetate pocket. And I put tons of die cuts in there and some ticket stubs. And then I put a sticker here from the sticker sheet. And that's just glued down. And this can actually get a, like a big picture in there to show through the acetate clear pocket. Over here I did some fun things. I clipped a bunch of die cuts um, with this swan paper clip. It's like a rose gold and some tags, little ticket stubs, and then I add a label here with another sticker that looks like washi tape. I think that's so pretty. Here's another pocket page and I just put a bunch of journaling cards that I cut out from the paper. More stuff can fit in here too and then I love these. This is a sticker and a little label. So this um, thing came in that card set that I had. It was some of the ephemera from the collection and it's a little library pocket so I just stuck extra die cuts in there and then this tag for journaling came in there. And I just, pu um, I just punched the holes and added it to the album. And then I added a little ticket stub and a sticker back here. Some journaling can be done there. This page is so beautiful I wanted to keep it kind of plain. I just put a carousel sticker ticket stub here with a flag and I just reinforced it with um, with my ATG. And then on this little bow paper clip, I just put some more ephemera and a happy label down there. So I love this spread as well. This is a little flip page that I got out of that um, card ephemera kit. And it's so cute. There's like area here with some journaling spots. And then I just clipped this love you label and it flips over like this and I clipped more ephemera here and then this little carnival ticket stub and then here's a label here to do the date or more journaling so this is a uh, one of those popcorn bags I showed you that I got at Marshalls and I just punched the holes and I put a bunch of tags and ephemera inside the pockets and another little label here so over here I put down some ticket stubs and I left it open so more um, so pictures and things can be slipped behind here and then I just added this glitter heart and you know me I don't like the fallout glitter so I sealed it with um, this Tombow Mono liquid glue so there's no glitter falling out okay so here's the last two pages and I really really love this spread so this is a pocket um, that I put a bunch of journaling cards in and yes there is a glittery one that's got glitter fallout everywhere but I know a lot of people love that um, so I have a pocket here with the happiness label and then I love this this is one of those cards also and I just trimmed it down and made it into a pocket 
and then I put lots of ephemera in here. I clipped a ticket stub with a swan paper clip and it's got this gorgeous swan with like a swivel wing right here. So that's that. And then the back page, I just put down this die cut of the tent, the circus tent. I really love how the album turned out. It was so easy and fun to do. I used so much paper and I used a lot of my die cuts and stickers. So I'm really happy about that. I'm gonna go through and just kind of gather everything I have left for this collection and get it together so I can see what I wanna make with the scraps. But I really wanna thank you so much for watching. Anybody can do this. Just get out some chipboard and your little hole punch and some rings and you can make this your own. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll give this project a try. If you enjoyed it and want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.